St. Lucia's natural beauty is unmatched. Beautiful beaches, lush vegetation, and the World Heritage Site, the Pitons. In a rare interview, former Prime Minister Dr. Kenny Anthony explains why the SLP government never purchased the privately owned lands on the World Heritage Site, now embroiled in an ongoing saga. The Gopital land where the structure is located is private property and was sold by the local owner to a Canadian citizen who received the title of approved developer during Dr. Kenny Anthony's premiership. The problem was one of cost. And obviously, if down the road the government wants to revisit that question, and I, I have no reason to think they should not revisit it, understand that the bill for the acquisition of the lands around the pitons will be a monumental bill, um, especially if you have to acquire, as the constitution says, the land at, um, a, at fair value or market value rates. According to the Special Development Area Act, the guidelines for an approved developer is defined in Section 5, which states, quote, an approved developer shall comply with any law in force in respect of land development, End quote. So why then would a developer spend millions on the lands in a no-build zone? Part of that fell outside. Now part fell within, and the purpose of my letter was to warn that these conditions um, would, ha would apply to any development. Okay. Um, so that is the first thing. The second thing, obviously, I suspect for a de developer would be the monumental value. I mean, to say that you have a building um, in proximity or close to the pitons, I mean, the marketing value of that is 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 um, is huge. Um, and I was a little astounded when I first heard about the size of the building that they wanted to put in there. I mean, there's there's a suggestion that the original building was 11,000 square feet, which have been a, a huge mansion. But after the intervention and the discussion, that was reduced to about 3,000 3, square feet. Dr. Anthony says a serious dialogue about the commercial exploitation of the lands near the Pitons is warranted. The St. Lucia Labour Party, in a press statement issued this week, called into question the role of Development Control Authority Chairman Clem Bob in the matter. The press release sought to ascertain whether the approval of construction on Gopito was a unilateral decision. A newly leaked document which has surfaced online purportedly shows the word rejected, crossed out, and the word approved, penned in, with what appears to be the DCA chairman's signature affixed. Despite numerous questions from the media, the authorities have yet to verify the authenticity of these documents, only referring press to a carousel of agencies which have declined comment. Dr. Anthony was questioned by a gaggle of reporters on Thursday about the consequences of these latest developments in the Gopito Villa matter. I am a little astonished by that, I'm surprised by that, but I don't want to pro pronounce on it because I don't know the background. I don't know what was the reaction between the chairman and uh, the, uh, the DCA board. I don't know, for example, whether he went back to the DCA board and said, I want you to reverse the decision, and they lawfully reversed the decision. I don't have enough information, but I, it's a surprising if, of course, it is the case that the DCA chairman um, unilaterally reversed the decision, then it should be contested, and it can be contested. The St. Lucia National Trust claims construction plans were not made available to the Peter Management Area Advisory Committee in keeping with rules and regulations. The controversy has resulted in a litany of calls for a halt to construction on Gopito given public anxiety about the beloved Peter's World Heritage Site status. From the beautiful beaches of St. Lucia, Solaj Alfred, HDS News Force.